Welcome everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you about the top Pokemon for every generation in competitive Pokemon. These are strictly based off of my research and kind of my opinions, so if you have different opinions, feel free to put them in the comments. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into it. First off, Gen 1. Gen 1 was dominated by the Psychic type, so Mewtwo thrived. This Pokemon was absolutely bonkers. With Psy Strike as a stab, 100, base 100 move with 100% accuracy, not fair, alright? High special attack, high special defense, great speed. It was a monster for the first generation. And for the second generation! That's right, for Gen 2, it's also Mewtwo, in my opinion. He still had great stats, great move pool. He just dominated, alright? That, that's kind of it. My pick for Gen 3 is probably off of what you would think. Usually people would say, Rayquaza, Mega Rayquaza, who I'm not actually going to be including because he was banned, but whatever. I'm actually going to be choosing Deoxys, partially because he's my favorite, po well, my favorite legendary, but that's not the main reason. I'm putting that off to the side. The main reason is because of his four forms with amazing stat spreads, just his normal form. Regular Deoxys has 150 attack, special attack, and speed. His, the attack form has 180 in all those. Defense form has 180 in defense and special defense and is well-rounded otherwise. Speed form, 180 in speed, well-rounded otherwise. And that just makes him so useful. Like, he could be run using any set as a mixed attacker which just makes him invaluable to any team at that point. He was just a monster. Like, Rayquaza dominated, sure, but it was limited in that sense, because it wouldn't be able to just sweep teams because of just mixed attacking and speed and all the other factors that played in, because Rayquaza is relatively slow, even though it's a jet plane kind of thing. Anyway, moving on to Gen 4, my pick is going to be Arceus. Who saw this coming? Arceus, the god of all Pokemon, the strongest Pokemon in his region. No, it, it makes sense. He's got 120 in every stat. And while Cresselia has made like big waves in the most recent gens, along with uh, Heatran, I still don't think that they can match up against how dominant Arceus was when he came out. Like he was monstrous. He could survive like almost any hit, he could kill pretty much everyone, and with E speed, extreme speed, with priority of like 5 or something, or 4, it was wild. Especially if you could like sword stance yourself up and just sweep the whole team. It was not fair, especially because you could run him with any type. But uh, moving on to Gen 5, for those of you who did not see this coming, uh, you should have. Landorus Therian! I'm counting black and white and black and white two for this gen just because they're right next to each other and Therian was only in the second one. He's so good that they he is still used in things today and still dominates. His typing's amazing with only two weaknesses and tons of resistances and two immunities. Like it's not fair. His move pulls wide, he gets earthquake, uh aerial ace Rock Slide, tons of other moves, Swords Dance, a beast, U-Turn, it's crazy. Plus, like, the pairing of him with Tornadus these days, it's crazy. Like, I cannot express to you guys how wildly broken Landorus T is. He's, he should be banned. Mega Rayquaza should not have been the one banned. He should have been the one banned. But, uh, moving on to another Pokemon that should have been banned. Xerneas! <laughs> I would choose Mega Rayquaza, but, uh, he's banned. So, uh, Xerneas is here. Because the mix of Geomancy, the setup move that boosts all of your stats by, what, plus two, plus three, is crazy. Plus it gets Moonblast, and, you know, is super effective against Mega Rayquaza, who was in the meta at the time, along with Salamance. Very good. In the meta that it was introduced in, I think Xerneas might have been one of the most dominant Pokemon of all time. Just in general. 
I mean, the next Pokemon that I'll get to that isn't Xerneas will be the most dominant, but still. It's crazy. The typing of Pure Fairy is always good. Uh, I remember it has good, uh, sorry, good coverage moves to make sure that it doesn't get slaughtered by a few Pokemon, including Meta Mega Metagross, who honestly wasn't used that much in the meta, but still was useful. Uh, but for Gen 7, I'm gonna say it's Gen 7 and move on. Alola. Uh, a lot of you would probably think, oh, it's probably one of the new Pokemon. But nope, we're pulling a Mewtwo. It's Xerneas yet again. Because it got its own uh, Z-move, I believe, and still remained broken because of Geomancy and Moonblast. So, yep, same reasoning. <laughs> but this next Pokemon was the strongest that has ever been. Zacian. For Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, there were tons of broken, meta-defining characters, or Pokemon, that showed up. Calyrex had two forms which were broken. Urshifu, still amazing, amazingly useful, great utility, does crazy damage, especially with his Gigantamax. And then there's Zacian. Possibly the most dominant Pokemon I have ever seen. Best typing in the game, up there with normal Ghost and Bug Steel. It's Fairy Steel, which is great. Tons of resistances. Uh, I think only two weaknesses. Could be wrong about that. Don't quote me. Not only did it have amazing coverage, but you know Regigigas, that Pokemon with like 160 uh, attack? but it gets a horrible ability to compensate for that so that it doesn't dominate. What if we uh, give Zacian the same a broken attack stat, but instead give it an ability that doubles that? Well, then you get the most dominant possible Pokemon that has ever existed. This was unfair. It ended up with like a base attack of like 300 something and dominated. Like, there was not, there were like maybe two teams that did not run Zacian because they had Togekiss, who is also a solid fairy type, so good, good for Dynamax. But not only that, it does crazy damage to almost every Pokemon in the game with amazing type moves and everything else in between. He is mind-bogglingly broken. But you know who is also very, very, very powerful? The first non-legendary that I'm mentioning in this video. Uh, if we're counting mythicals, which we are. Because we're going off of a video that I made previously, which is the legendary problem. If you haven't seen that, you should. It's a great video, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you've been enjoying this video so far. So let's move on to Gen 9. The most powerful Pokemon is not one of the Beasts of Ruin, or Legendaries of Ruin, despite the fact that they are also very, very powerful. It's not Ogre Pond, because I haven't really seen it in competitive play yet. And it's not any of the previously mentioned Pokemon from previous gens. It is Fluttermane, who is also one of the most dominant Pokemon. Yet again, we see a fairy type in the top spot. How many times have we seen that? Let's see. Xerneas, Zacian, Fluttermane. Three times in the past four gens have we seen the exact same dominating type. It's a really good type. People say that Steel is the best. I think it's the best defensively, but Fairy might be the single best type ever because just the absurd amount of broken Pokemon with that typing. But the reason that Fluttermane is so good is not only the typing of Fairy and Ghost, which is very solid, but it has 135 base... Uh, Special attack, special defense, and speed, which makes it faster than most Pokemon with wild damage. Plus, its ability Protosynthesis boosts its highest, highest attack, which means if you run it with high special attack and give it a booster energy, which boosts your, which is basically activating Protosynthesis, its special attack or speed or special defense or whatever you're boosting goes through the roof. Like, it's not fair! It, it, it becomes... broken! There's nothing you can do about it! Like, it's been one of the most dominant Pokémon in the current meta. It's been on every team. 
I think it was one of the Pokemon on the winners of the 2023 World Championships. And it's been dominant since the start of the game. Like, it's been, what, a year since this game has come out? Not once has Fluttermane fallen. It's crazy. So, that was all. those are all my picks for the strongest Pokemon in each gen. So, if you enjoyed, remember to like and subscribe. And if you had any opinions that clashed with mine, don't forget to put it in the comments below. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.